Today on Open Mind GFO Report, a famous alien abduction story is being made into a movie. A New York witness videotapes a boomerang-shaped UFO, and San Diego witnesses tweet UFO videos. Your Open Mind GFO Report starts now. Hello and welcome to the Open Mind UFO Report. My name is Alejandro Rojas. The story of Betty and Barney Hill, the first couple to report being allegedly abducted by aliens that received media attention, is going to be made into a movie. The movie will be based on a book about the incident written by Betty Hill's niece called Captured, the Betty and Barney Hill UFO Experience, the true story of the world's first documented alien abduction. The Hills reported their encounter in 1961. They said they saw strange lights and an object that followed them in their vehicle during a cross-country trip. At one point, they turned a corner and the craft was almost directly in their path. They described it as a huge flattened circular disc with a row of intense blue-white lighted windows along its forward edge. Barney pulled over and grabbed a pair of binoculars for a closer look. He says he saw creatures inside the craft he described as strangely not human. The craft then tilted toward him and began to move closer. He says he then received a frightening message from one of the occupants of the craft. Terrified that they were coming to get him, Barney raced back to their car and told Betty that they needed to leave or else they were going to be captured. Unfortunately, it seems they did not leave in time. They reported experiencing a period of missing time Researchers used hypnotic regression to discover more about what might have happened during the missing time, and the Hills separately told similar stories of being examined by strange creatures. Betty's niece, Kathleen Martin, has spent a lifetime investigating the alien abduction phenomena, and in the summer of 2007 published Captured, co-written with nuclear physicist and UFO researcher Stanton Friedman. The movie's announcement has made headlines in the entertainment world, it will be produced by Gotham Principal, who have recently produced the new Maze Runner movie, and Stellar Productions, which is ran by Bryce and Jackie Zabel. Bryce's previous UFO and alien-inspired work has included the NBC TV series Dark Skies, which was based on common UFO mythology, such as the Men in Black and Majestic 12. He was also the co-author of the book A.D. After Disclosure, when the government finally reveals the truth about alien contact. The book was co-written with UFO researcher and historian Richard Dolan. It speculates on the aftermath of the government admitting to decades of covering up UFO and alien events. We were able to catch up with Bryce and ask him about the project. So you just got back from the Emmys. I did. I go every year as a past chairman. I get lifetime tickets to the uh, primetime Emmys, and it's a pretty terrific, uh, pretty terrific thing to do. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. It's it's great. And, you know, it was a good show this year. I think people at home enjoyed Andy Samberg. And, and it was certainly uh, powerful seeing Tracy Jordan come out at the very end of it. A lot of people were very moved by that. So it had a lot of uh, appeal. So the movie uh, Captured. Yes. I guess, why this story? Oh, gosh. I Captured, to me, is one of the best cases in ufology and always has been. I've been always compelled by it, learning about it even as a kid and just thinking it was a great story. But what particularly makes me want to make this film is that if you look at all of uh, the ufological reports of abductions over the years, uh, this is the first one. The, at least it's the first one that got a lot of attention. And so they were not telling a story based on reading somebody else's story, uh, as you might suspect some people are today. So I look at it as a chance to go back to the beginning and these people, Betty and Barney Hill, uh, seem to be salt of the earth um, kind of people um, and, and with no real intent to lie or distort. And yet they told this incredible story. So I want to look into that and I want to tell their story uh, in a way that, that people can make up their own mind about. Mm -hmm. And speaking of salt of the earth type of people, Kathleen Martin, yes. uh, her niece who wrote the book, she's, she's one of those people as well. And I don't think people realize she's got decades of research in this field. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, the book uh, was something I was waiting for for a long time, a, a piece of uh, intellectual property that I could actually option that was based on independent research done by Stanton Friedman and Kathleen Martin. 
And as what I what I particularly like about it is it's got the the scientific aspect of it from Stanton, and then from Kathleen, it also has a lot of that personal uh, storytelling that that a movie needs to have, where she was Betty's niece, and so I think she was fourteen years old at the time this happened. So she's an interesting character in the film herself. Mm -hmm. And there are other political and social issues that uh, it looks like the film's going to tackle. I think that you, you cannot look at Betty and Barney Hill's abduction in September of 1961, actually 54 years ago this week is when it happened. You can't look at that in a context just by itself. A uh, couple of things. First, Betty and Barney Hill were an interracial couple at a time when, frankly, uh, America still had segregation laws on the books. So it was a really intense thing to be uh, a, a, an interracial couple. And in fact, I would argue that uh, at a time when no one in America could see anything when they saw Betty and Barney together but their race, it appears that if there were aliens who abducted them, they're the ones who didn't see their race. So there's the racial component. That's very interesting. But an, another component that I've never seen really talked about a lot, but that I think is important, is that they were right next to a nuclear bomber base. Um, Peace Air Force Base in 1961, as I understand it, was bristling with nuclear weapons. And uh, considering the connection between UFOs and nuclear weapons over past years uh, with, with some of the issues that, that we've had, uh, seems like a really fresh angle to look at it. So I want to I see them uh, as the people they were. Also, I want to see them in a context of America's uh, racial uh, t uh, difficulties and also see it in a context of the Cold War that we were fighting that was hugely intense at the time. Mm -hmm. So, and it looks like the announcement of the movie last week has made a lot of press. I've seen it all over the place. Uh, is that unexpected? It is kind of unexpected. I, I just thought that it was a good thing to talk about. Um, and, and I was surprised, but, but I guess I'm not surprised because it's a compelling story. And, and I think that what this really shows is that a lot of people have been hungry for this story to be told in film. And, uh, you know, granted, it was told 40 years ago as an NBC movie of the week, uh, but it wasn't told well, I mean, at least the way that we can today. And I think there's new information clearly that has come out in all those years. And there's new information uh, all, and there's new techniques, for example, to bring it to life. So um, I, I think that the explanation for why so many ca people cared about it is they want to see this done and they really think it's an important case, as I do. Mm -hmm. And how long are we going to have to wait to see the movie? Well, that's, um, that's always, uh, that's something I don't control. Um, but I will say that the people we're in business with, which is Gotham slash Principal, um, is the production company that's uh, currently got uh, Maze Runner, uh, Scorch Trials, out in theaters, which was the number one movie this, uh, this past weekend. So they're not nobody. Uh, and the fact that they're interested in doing it as one of their follow-ups to these huge successes they've had with the Maze Runner um, movies, uh, I think that speaks pretty highly. We're obviously in the middle of... Uh, trying to put that whole package together so that the studios and, you know, so that we'll, we'll bring it to fruition. And that takes some time, clearly. But we're a lot further along than we used to be. All right. Well, good luck with everything. It's really Thank exciting you. news. Thanks, Alejandro. I really appreciate that. And, and uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. A New York witness at Port Jefferson on the north shore of Long Island reported watching and videotaping a boomerang-shaped UFO moving overhead according to a report submitted to the Mutual UFO Network, also known as MUFON, Witness Reporting Database. The witness says he was driving home from work when he first noticed the object at 10.30 p.m. on April 17, 2015. When I looked to my left, I noticed red and blue lights hovering, the witness stated. I stopped and watched for a little bit to see if it was just someone playing with a toy, but then the object went higher into the air and started to move pretty fast. The witness pulled out his telephone and began recording the object on video until the phone powered down. In the video, the object can be seen zipping around in the sky, moving very quickly. The case was investigated by New York field investigator Joseph Flammer and chief investigator Nicholas Volgaris and closed as an unknown. The investigators reported that further study of the video needs to be completed. Earlier this month, several witnesses in San Diego observed mysterious lights in the sky they could not identify. Several of them tweeted videos of the objects, and one of them talked to the local newspaper. 
Earlier this month, several witnesses in San Diego observed mysterious lights in the sky they could not identify. Several of them tweeted videos of the objects and one of them talked to the local newspaper. Garrett Condor is a high school sophomore. While watching the San Diego Chargers on TV with his family on September 3rd, 2015, something unusual happened. A few minutes after 8 p.m., Condor's brother called for his family to come outside. Condor told the Eagle Times newspaper, We all ran outside. It was the most credible piece of UFO evidence I had ever seen. In the southeast sky, it was a diamond-shaped object, goldish yellow lights, very bright, not blinking like aircraft lights. I've never seen anything like it. My jaw dropped. I was flabbergasted. The lights were in a weird formation, flying above and below each other. Then the lights blinked out one at a time. Condor immediately tweeted the event, writing verbatim, I just saw a UFO in Imperial Beach, California. A diamond-shaped U-Do four lights. One by one, they disappeared. My whole family witnessed this. Condor found other witnesses on Twitter. A man from nearby National City tweeted a video of the lights. Another tweeter posted a similar video from Chula Vista. Some have suggested the lights could be Chinese lanterns. However, according to the Eagle and Times, author and novice UFO investigator Charles G. Stewart says the lights do look a little too organized to be sky lanterns. That's your Open Minds UFO report for today. You can find these stories and more at openminds.tv. We post fresh UFO news daily. You can also follow us on Twitter at Open Minds TV, and you can find us on Facebook. Don't forget to register for the International UFO Congress, the Guinness World Record holding largest UFO convention. Early registration is open now, so reserve your spot at the lowest price available all year at ufocongress.com. Let us know if you enjoyed today's episode by liking the episode on YouTube and leaving us your comments in the section below. You can also download our Open Minds UFO radio on iTunes or at openminds.tv forward slash radio. Thanks again for joining us today. For OpenMinds.tv, I'm Alejandro Rojas.